These spiky little sea creatures are incredibly common throughout the world. They are slow-moving creatures, which are commonly found in the intertidal zones of rocky shorelines. Sea urchins have a number of surprising traits to help keep them alive. Read on to learn about the sea urchin. Description of the sea urchin. The easiest way to describe a sea urchin of any species is ball of spines. Most species resemble a pincushion filled to the brim with needles. They come in a wide variety of colors, shapes, and sizes. Some species have incredibly long, thin spines, and others have short thick nubs. Interesting facts about the sea urchin. These spiny little creatures actually have a number of different adaptations beneath all those spines. Whoever thought you could learn something new about a ball of spikes? The first one, spikes of many shapes and sizes. There are seemingly endless combinations of spine colors and arrangements on sea urchins. This should be a little surprise, as you can find a lot of variety in 950 different species. The second one, Heidi Hole. When exploring tide pools, you may find that sea urchins seem to fit perfectly into divots in the rocks around them. That is because the sea urchins actually make those holes themselves. They use the five teeth in their mouths to carve holes into the rock around them for better protection from predators. The third one, Pedicillaria. In addition to their formidable spines, sea urchins have tiny claws on the surface of their shells in between their spines. These tiny claws are believed to aid the sea urchin in clearing debris, algae, and parasites from their shells. The fourth one float like a butterfly, sting like a flower? Contrary to popular belief, most sea urchins don't sting people and aren't poisonous or venomous. Most injuries occur when the person steps on or hits the urchin's spines. One venomous sea urchin, the flower urchin, does inject venom into potential threats. Surprisingly, it is not the spines that are venomous, but the pedicillaria, which clamps down on anything that they touch before injecting their toxin. Habitat of the sea urchin. Despite their frequency in the intertidal zone, in tide pools, sea urchins can be found at many different depths and in any habitats. They can also be found in nearly any ocean temperature. Sea urchins inhabit the polar seas as well as the warm tropics. Distribution of the sea urchin. Sea urchins can inhabit nearly any ocean in the world. Sea urchins have even been found at depths greater than 6,850 meters. Diet of the sea urchin. Sea urchins mainly graze on algae and undersea vegetation, such as kelp. They have also been known to feed on sponges, sea stars, mussels, sea cucumbers, carrion, and polycheat worms. Sea urchins feed by grabbing and biting with their five teeth. Their mouths are found on the underside of their bodies. Sea urchin and human interaction. Sea urchins and humans interact in a number of ways. Humans in different cultures have used sea urchins as a source of food, and the part of the sea urchin consumed is typically the gonads. Sea urchins are eaten in Japanese, Mediterranean, Italian, Chilean, Native American, and New Zealand cultures. Injuries frequently occur due to sea urchin impalement. Sea urchins have brittle spines, and when stepped on, the spines have a tendency to break off in the foot or hand. Most sea urchin species are not venomous, and as long as the spines are removed the damage is minimal. Domestication. Sea urchins have not been domesticated, but they have been easily bred in aquariums. They are also commonly used in biological research. Does the sea urchin make a good pet? Some species of sea urchins make a wonderful addition to saltwater tanks, as they feed on algae. Saltwater aquariums are, however, expensive and difficult to maintain. Sea urchin care. The level of care depends on the species, but in a tank with stable temperature, salt, and pH, sea urchins should be relatively easy to maintain. The slate pencil urchin will feed on algae in the tank and virtually care for itself. Make sure to research if other fish in your aquarium will attempt to eat the urchin. Behavior of the sea urchin. Sea urchins spend the vast majority of their lives foraging for food. They wander the sea floor using their spines and a row of tube feet as locomotion. The sea urchin's tube feet are powered by water flowing in and out of them and equipped with suction cup-like feet. Reproduction of the sea urchin. Sea urchins reproduce via external fertilization. This means that, when male and female sea urchins breed, the sea urchins release their gamete cells into the ocean. When a male gamete meets a female gamete, they create a zygote, or single new cell. This zygote divides, and divides, and divides, until it has created an embryo. The embryo develops into a cone-shaped echinopluteus larvae, which will free swim until it is ready to sink to the bottom, and become a juvenile sea urchin. These are few facts about sea urchins. The first one, the red sea urchin is the largest of the species. In general sea urchins grow to be around 1.18 inches to 3.93 inches. The red sea urchin is the biggest of the species, and it will enter adulthood when it reaches 1.96 inches in diameter. 
It will then continue to grow until it reaches around 3.93 inches, whereas most other sea urchins will stop growing around 1.96 inches. The red sea urchin can be found in the North Pacific Ocean, from as far north as Alaska, to as south as Baja, California. The second one, they have zero bones in their body. Unlike humans, they don't rely on a bone structure to support their bodies. Urchins have a shell-like structure which is called a test. The hard shell made from calcium carbonate is similar to that of starfish and sand dollars, and is their main form of protection. The structure consists of small plate segments that enclose the urchin, it looks a bit like the segments of an orange. As well as the test they have spines which help them protect themselves from predators. Third one, it is possible for some fish, to build up immunities to the flower urchin's venom. The clownfish is one of the only species, that purposefully try to build immunity to the flower urchin's venom. Clownfish will dance around the flower urchin, lightly brushing itself against the spines. This means they are exposed to a small amount of venom, but not enough to kill them. After repeating this a few times they become immune to the venom. You might be wondering why they choose to do this, and the reason is so they can eat the parasites, that live on the flower urchin. This relationship is beneficial to both creatures as the clownfish gets food, and the flower urchin has its parasites removed. The fourth one, urchins makes for a tasty snack, not just for animals but humans too. Not only are there species, that eat the parasites off of the urchins, but there are also animals that eat them whole. Sea urchins have quite a few predators which is surprising given their spines and sometimes venom. The sea otter is one of their biggest predators, they will eat as many as they can get their hands on. Some of the most common predators are crabs, large fish, eels, and even birds. Urchins also have the threat of humans, urchin and in particular, their row are seen as a delicacy in many places. This threat has caused a large decrease in the population, and has caused some species of sea urchins to become endangered because of overfishing. The fifth one, sea urchins have just five teeth. Sea urchins are omnivores, and have just five teeth, which are held together in the center of its body. Each tooth has its own jaw to keep it in place, this means it is able to move more freely. The teeth are made from calcium carbonate, and they also have a tongue-like structure alongside them which gives them a beak-like a mouth. Urchins mostly feed on algae found on rocks or corals, as well as any debris or decomposing matter from fish or sea creatures. The sixth one, urchins have hundreds of tiny feet. Sea urchins have five paired rows of tubular tiny feet called pedicillariae. These tiny rows are located between the spines, each foot is a small sucker-like shape which allows the urchin to grip surfaces, in order to pull itself along. The suckers are also useful to help catch food, and attach themselves to the ocean floor. So, today we are talking about some details about sea urchins. Thanks for watching, subscribe for more videos.